Hello everyone and welcome back to the X-Ring. On today's episode, we're going to take a first look at the new Garmin Zero C1 Pro chronograph. So stick around. All right, so for those that watch the channel, you guys know that I did some chronograph tests recently using the Magneto Speed with the Gray Ops Bayonet, the Lab Radar, the FX Impact, and even the Mach 4 Plus. However, as of today, October 19th, 2023, I think we have a game changer on board. So this is the new Garmin Zero XERO C1 Pro. This is something that's not new to me. I've actually had it for a little while. There's been a lot of beta testing with this unit, and I believe it's really going to change the face of the market when it comes to chronographs. But before we get started and me showing you everything on this unit, I think you need to realize that I don't think anything that is a Doppler radar, like your impacts or any of these other ones, are going to give you the exact same numbers that a magneto speed is. We have to just simply look at how a Doppler works and basically it's taking that measurement down range and then it's putting it in a program and then it's estimating that speed back to the muzzle. All right, so for some of you that have been researching into this new Garmin release, Garmin did actually have a stand set up at the Gap Grind 2023 this year, and they did kind of like a soft introduction to the unit. They had quite a few units there for people to try and to look at. You know, one of the big standbys is that magneto speed, but if you're not a guy that just has one rifle, you know, because once you get an extension set up, you really don't have to do much because you already have the standoff right and everything else. But if you're a guy that's testing multiple rifles, multiple calibers, different barrel contours, different chassis, you're going to have to constantly be adjusting those. I think it's why the Doppler is actually so popular is because it is pretty easy to set up. However, there's a little bit of a learning curve with it on getting it aimed properly and everything else. Well, this Garmin kind of changes all of that. While I was at the Gap Grind, I was on the line with almost 30 shooters at a time. We were all shooting in the same direction, and I never once got a malfunction or a read error on the Garmin Zero. So for those of you that want to see that direct comparison, this is the Garmin Zero. This is a GoPro Hero 11. So I'm kind of using this as reference on the actual size of it. It is slightly wider, slightly taller, but it's a little more narrow at the top. You guys can see how that's kind of tapered out so that when you put it on the mount, the Doppler side is actually facing the direction of fire. This is also made in Taiwan, just for those that want to know. Uh, nothing wrong with that. A lot of the Garmin products are made overseas. It's just the way it is today's day and time. What you're going to get in the box is supposedly just this, and I say supposedly because this might not have had the complete packaging. Uh, when I first got this unit, there wasn't even an app, which there is an available app on the App Store called ShopView, and that's the one you want to download for this for your phone integration. So it's going to come with the actual unit itself. It also comes with a little mini tripod. It does have the quarter 20 on the top of it. And basically you just screw it in, point it in the direction of the projectile going down range, and it should give you a reading. I actually didn't even get an owner's manual with this. And it's been that simple to use the user menu to be able to get the shots that I needed. There's very few things that you have to do. And that is select the velocity range, which is very broad, but that's mostly for subsonic and then also for your supersonic range. That's pretty much it. You'll also specify if you're gonna be shooting rifle or pistol. I've tested it with both suppressed, unsuppressed, pistol, rifle, center fire, rim fire, and I've had zero issues with reading. Now, when I compared it directly to the magneto speed, I did get some slight variances, somewhere between four feet per second to a max of about 10 feet per second. We're actually gonna try it here right now with the magneto speed and compare it side by side. So let's see what we get when we try it here now. 
Okay, so regardless of what you might think on how easy it is to set up a magneto speed, it still takes some time. You usually have to move your bipod back. If you've got the Gray Ops rig or if you have a Wiser Precision, it still takes a moment. If it's a different rifle than what it's used to, then you're going to have to make some adjustments. It is pretty quick though, but you're still carrying around a large bayonet. This is as simple as opening up the legs and merely turning it on. Now I'm going to apologize about the glare but there is no issue whatsoever seeing the screen on the Garmin. On the Garmin, I'm just gonna hit OK, new session. And then this is going to be a rifle. So let me go up to rifle, we're gonna hit OK. And then this velocity range is definitely gonna be subsonic. So OK. Okay, so now it's gonna ask about the projectile weight. We'll just go ahead and do it while we're here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this down to zero. We're gonna say, OK, this is a 40 grain. Could have went the other way, but that's okay. Okay, okay. And it's saying five inches to 15 inches from the barrel, five to 15 inches from the muzzle. So we are well within that. I'm just gonna kind of point it the right direction, hit okay, and it's waiting. And what we're gonna do is I have five rounds of Ely, which we all know that CZs don't like Ely. This is a custom rifle that was done up for me by DP Gunworks. So here we go. All right, so it's analyzing the shot. And the magneto speed, it says signal crossing bad, signal strength high, press any button. So 1135 is what I've got on the Garmin. So it didn't have any issues reading it. I don't know why I'm not getting a reading on the magneto speed, but it does happen. So let me check it again. I apologize for the lighting here, but it, it is what it is. We're gonna take five rounds of Ely Bench Rest. This is actually a little hotter than what most of these CZs like, but it doesn't matter. We're just getting velocity. So here we go. I'll see which one's faster. So of course the Magneto Speed is the fastest in getting the results back, 1093 as opposed to 1092. And we already have the other one, 1093, 1091. We'll do five shots, guys. And one more. All right, so this is some very consistent ammo. The magneto speed is showing a standard deviation of 2.8, and the Garmin is showing 2.5. Average 1094, average 1095. So guys, you'll see that it is accurate enough for what you're doing. It is super simple, super fast. I've had no issues getting any readings. Even with pistol, it's been super fast. All right, so over the last month, I've had this unit with me everywhere, everywhere from Finger, Tennessee to Dalton, New Hampshire to Logan, New Mexico, and I've just had it in my carry-on. So the portability has been incredible. I've only had to charge it once in that entire time, and I've used it for multiple days. It has yet to miss a single shot on either pistol or rifle, suppressed, unsuppressed, rimfire, and centerfire. And so this is a really, really neat unit. Um, I've used it in conjunction with multiple other shooters on the line, not get, gotten any type of read errors or anything. And with that name like Garmin, a name you can trust, I've been using their products for many, many years now. They've got some awesome, awesome, awesome stuff out there, especially when it comes to like the, you know, the tactics watches or the applied ballistics watches. Uh, so they're not new to the game. They've actually had some of the chronographs out for bows uh, from back in the past, but Let's talk about more about this unit, but before we do, I do want to tell everybody, you know, I appreciate everyone that watches, but I also appreciate the relationships that I have with other manufacturers, one of those being Area 419. You guys know they've supported me and the channel since the start. Um, you know, I use a lot of their products, everything from the reloading products to the Zero Press, uh, all the stuff that I use in the CZs, whether it's the, um, the base for the CZ or the bolt knobs, they just make great quality products. And what's great is when other manufacturers work with other manufacturers to come up with things at their launch. And so Area 419 has devised this Arca Swiss clamp mount where the Garmin actually screws in and so it'll work perfectly with your rifle. You can actually use it while you're shooting in a match or whatever if you needed to check your velocities. I'm not one that would actually do that during a match, but it is a good way to be able to check it. And so, because of my relationship with Area 419, they've agreed that if you use X-Ring in the coupon code, um, it will give you 5% off anything in the store, 
including this, as well as free shipping. So anything from Area 419, and I get no kickback from that. That is just a way of them saying thank you. And so if you're looking for something from Area 419, definitely use X-Ring and the coupon code, and it'll help you out with your purchase. All right, 1093. I'm trying not to move my jacket around so much. 1083. Let's see if we can hit some steel. Now, if I wanted to get a velocity on pistol, it's pretty easy. We're going to turn it on, new session, OK. And we're going to go down to pistol, OK. And then we're going to select the velocity range. We are going to be using a Glock 44 with a CGS suppressor on here. And we're going to hit OK. And we're going to skip the grain weight, not important. OK. 5 to 15 inches above the radar. So let me go ahead and get this pointed in the direction of the range down range. Let me go ahead and charge it. And here we go. 883, 902, 873, and 861. So guys, it does work very well. So even if you're using a centerfire pistol or anything like that, you're still going to get your numbers very quickly. All right, so the user interface is super, super simple. I'm going to give you guys a rundown of all the menus at the end of the video. But one of the biggest things is the new Shot View app. If I click on this app, I can pair it to the phone and find the phone. And once I find the phone, then we can actually go through the interface. Okay, so you're going to see the Shot View app here. I'm going to give you kind of a close up of that. Hopefully, it stays focused. Uh, if it doesn't, then there you go. We can kind of see it somewhere in there. It's kind of fishing around for the focus. But if we click on that, you're going to see this screen here. Okay. So let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit on this. Hopefully I can keep everything focused as best I can. And then what we're going to do is we're just merely going to turn the unit on. All right. So opening up that menu, what you're going to see is the pistol cartridge, the model, the date and the time, how many shots, average kinetic energy, which I didn't input as a value, 880 feet per second. You've got your spread and standard deviation, your min max, and you've got your shots. You can edit the shot if you want to. So if we want to take away, let's say there was one that was just really hot in here and we take away this one at 902, uh, now you're going to see that it changes everything with regards to all of your averages and everything else. Standard deviation came down to 9.1. So very easy user interface. If we go back to home uh, what we can do is see rifle cartridges from the past um, all different weights so it's going to record all of those in there very easy easy user interface you've got home on the bottom left and sessions on the right these are your sessions broken down so it's very easy to do especially by date you guys can see some of these dates that i've done in the past before actually deleting them so if you go back to home that's going to take you to the main screen if we go back to the unit it's going to show you that it's connected all right, I hope you guys all enjoyed the review of the new Garmin Zero C1 Pro and then also the mount system by Area 419. Guys, products like this are what keep the industry moving and in a time where it's kind of stagnant with everyone kind of waiting to see what happens with this election, uh, it's really cool to see innovative products hitting the market. I know that this is a great unit. It has had no problems. I've had zero issues with it whatsoever in the time that I've had it. The MSRP is going to be $600 and they should be dropping today on most of your Garmin dealers. So definitely check them out. I do apologize for not staying more in touch with you guys, but it's been crazy, crazy busy. It always is in the fall. I appreciate everyone that watches and subscribes to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. And that would help me out quite a bit. You guys take care. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, so looking at the Garmin Zero C1 Pro, you guys can see how it is relative to the size of a hand. And we're gonna just look at it here. It has this trapezoidal shape. So you can see the screen, it's angled. You will see the Doppler side on the back side here. It is secured with two, four, six, eight screws. And then here you have a USB-C connector. So I'm doing this indoors so you guys can hear it. On the top, you're gonna have a sighting line. You've got okay power or back and then up and down so we're going to press the button for the power and i'm going to do this so you guys can see it and there it goes it fires up so you have new session history and then settings 
I'm gonna try to get the glare just right, but you guys can see that's an anti-glare screen, so that's done properly. Uh, they are gonna have screen savers and whatnot available for these as well. So we're gonna skip history, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to settings. I'm gonna hit the OK button, and once I hit the OK button, right here, you guys are gonna see unit FPS. Uh, we're gonna hit OK because this way you'll see the options. It has FPS, miles per hour, meters per second, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, that's all in here. So we're gonna choose feet per second, we'll say okay. Now we're gonna to go to display color. So what we're gonna do is go down to display color. You have black and you have white. You can see the contrast there. So let's switch this back to black. Now what we're gonna do is go to backlight. So right now it is set on 25% backlight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip these lights off so you guys can see this backlighting. It is completely dark in here, but you guys can see that blue tint. That blue tint doesn't really appear to the naked eye. Uh, what we can do is we can increase. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and hit okay. And what we can do is increase, or sorry, <laughs> okay. Every time we press it, it gets brighter or darker. Okay, so off, so you can turn it off. And we'll just put it there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn lights back on. We're gonna to go to data fields. And so what we're gonna do is go down to data fields. And this is pretty good here because you'll see data field one, that's gonna be max velocity. Now data field two is also gonna be max velocity, but you have a bunch of options here. So if we hit okay, we can choose between average velocity, which we already have in data field three. You also have standard deviation. We have extreme spread you have kinetic energy, you have your power factor, and then down to minimum. So we're actually gonna put this down on SD, so standard deviation. Now we're gonna choose the next data field three. Um, I don't really usually care about max, so let me go ahead and change max up here at the top, and we're gonna change this to extreme spread. Now in a perfect world, I'd probably have average up at the very top, which I could do very easily, but just so you guys can see all the features on this. So uh, let's go ahead and go back to standard deviation, extreme spread, and then now we're gonna hit that. Now pro settings, but we're gonna hit okay. You can see the grain weight entry uh, on putting in the grain weight and then show alignment diagrams. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get out of this. Language of course is English. Connectivity is gonna be your Bluetooth pair phone. This is reset all settings, and this is your about information with regards to the software and everything else. So that is the internal menu list. Uh, we're just gonna press and hold to turn this off. And that's it, super easy, super simple. And here's a view of the bottom with that quarter 20. So you can put it on pretty much any tripod as long as you got the quarter 20 screw on it. I think this is gonna be an awesome product and I uh, can't wait to get one of my own. So one other thing that it comes with is in this quarter 20 mount, you're going to have this mini tripod. Now I've dealt with mini tripods in the past and they're really flimsy. This is actually done right. Uh, it actually has a little tether here for a wrist lanyard. Uh, we can screw this right in. And basically what you can do is just place this on the ground or on the table. You're going to extend the legs like that and you have it all set up. The other thing that's pretty cool about it, and it's, it's, of course it's Garmin, if you pay attention to the detail, you can see they've, this right here is injection molded out, so you've got lightweightness, and then right here, these are actual rubber feet. So it is rather non-skid. You can see how it's kind of bouncing around here, and that's because it's sticking to this table. So that is the tripod for it, and these are all the accessories I know of at the moment. I have seen some prototype mounts that actually clamp onto an ARCA rail so that this can be mounted onto the side of the rifle uh, facing away from you so you can get real-time data on the Garmin.